right, so I just got back from an exploratory fishing trip and I found a massive brook trout. He's got to be pushing 14 inches and I have nicknamed him Goliath because he's just unbelievably large. This creek itself is just incredible. I mean, the average size fish has got to be pushing, you know, 8 to 10 inches. So, I'm going to spend the next week or so trying to catch this fish and see what happens. All right guys, so you know what time it is. It's time to try to catch Goliath. This is day number um, four, is that four? Is this the fourth time going after him? Third time? I know I lost him the one time he broke off, whatever. So I think this is the third video of me going after Goliath. And I've yet to, um, I've yet to catch the stupid thing. I say stupid very affectionately. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go try to catch this fish. It has been raining off and on all day. It's been two or three days since I last fished for him when it rained last. I've just been super busy, haven't been able to get out because of my job. So, I am going back out today and I'm going to catch this stupid thing once and for all and put a, put a rest to this story of Goliath. I think it's been, officially been an entire week since I caught the, or since I originally found the fish. I've fished for him like three or four times now. So I'm gonna go out today, I only have a few hours. I've got this streamer rod again, since that's what I moved him on last time. And of course, I'm gonna try to catch him on dry fly first. So that's the plan, stay tuned. I'm about to catch this mega giant fish. Biggin, biggin boys, biggin, biggin. Woo, let's go baby. What's up buddy? I don't think that's actually as big as the couple I caught, but he's probably eight. Chill, chill. Oh, yeah, gone. There it goes again, dude. Where'd he go? That's a big one, dude. God bless. What is going on in this creek? It's another big freaking brook trout. I thought I hooked a whale. Look at that, guys. Big freaking thing. My gosh. Pop his hook real quick. Ah, I can't get a shot of these stupid things. All right, guys, so I just got up to the hole. Um, the bugs are horrible right now. It's ridiculous, the gnats. But um, the creek has dropped a little bit since the last time I was here. It's been raining on and off, but it doesn't mean it's rained in this hollow specifically because this time of the year, the thunderstorms are like super spotty. Basically, my point is, is the water's a lot more still than it normally is. I think I'm gonna have to downsize my dry fly and probably throw like a size like 14 to 16, something. I don't know what I'll throw on. Maybe an elk caddis or something like that. And I'm going to sneak up here and make a lot longer cast, make sure, I'm going to use 5x tippet, make sure everything's good, and then hopefully set up and catch this fish. Alright, so, I crawled up there to the left side of the hole with my, I have like a little nymph on. And I'm sitting there, I'm like crawling up because I think the fish is sitting towards the head. I look back at the back and Goliath is sitting there, not at the back end of the hole, but probably in probably the, I mean it's probably the deepest part of the hole, I'm going to be honest. I don't exactly know that hole that well, but... I think it's the deepest part of the hole. He's just sitting there chilling. So I don't exactly know what to do. I think I'm gonna grab the fly box, grab this camera. I'm gonna crawl back up to where I was and I'm just gonna sit there and watch him and see like if I throw different flies, how he reacts to each fly. Cause that'll help me learn him more and maybe I'll eventually catch him. And I'm probably not gonna leave until that fish either spooks or something happens to him. So I don't know what time it is. Well, let me look, 6.30. So I'll probably stay here for another at least half hour to an hour depending on if the fish moves or what it does. So fingers crossed we can catch this fish by the end of the night. If not, then I'll be back here tomorrow probably. It's supposed to rain a lot tomorrow, so tomorrow's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. I had to probably like that. 
I mean, he, all he had to do was open his mouth, and he said no. And you've got to think, like, if that was just a slightly more attractive... No way. God bless, dude. I just sat there. I just sat here. I've watched this fish for... Let's see what time it is real quick. Hour and 10 minutes or so. I haven't watched the fish for an hour and 10 minutes. I've been sitting here fishing for it for an hour and 10 minutes. Um, I came down here and I had it refuse my dry. Made a little wake on it but didn't eat the dry. So now I've been sitting here for close to an hour watching the fish and it literally, it moved, it ate one thing one time in the hour I've been sitting here. I've put probably a dozen different dry flies past it. Everything from a big like size 12 um, stemmy to size like 18 and 20 parachute atoms. The fish just doesn't seem to be wanting to feed, doesn't, doesn't seem to be wanting to eat. And then I just tied on a dry and I put a dropper down below it. And I cast it like three or four times, fish made no effort to it whatsoever. And then on the fourth time, my fly got stuck in some little eddy right there. Or just wasn't moving very fast. And all of a sudden the fish just all at once turned, sucked in the nymph. I pull straight up and I just pulled the nymph right out of its mouth. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Fish swam up out of here. I mean, it's, it's gone. It swam back up to wherever it hides. So, that's probably it. It's not really... I mean, I'm done. It's getting dark now anyway. So, I guess I'm going to get out of here. It's supposed to rain a crap ton tomorrow. So, I guess my plan is tomorrow is I'm going to come in here and try to catch it tomorrow. Goliath once again. I fished yesterday as I'm sure you guys saw and didn't catch him but I did see him. I got to watch him for about an hour and 15 minutes. I sat there and watched the fish. He did try to take a nymph and he tried to take a dry fly but both times I don't know if he's denying it or he's sipping it in spitting it out so fast that I can't hook it. Whatever he's doing he's he's succeeding and not getting caught but I'm sitting here right now I'm sure as you guys can hear in the background it is uh, it's raining pretty hard so um, I'm just chilling here because although I don't necessarily care to get wet, I don't want to get this camera wet. If I do end up catching the fish, I'd like to get a few pictures of it before I release it. So, I'm just chilling. Hopefully the rain doesn't last too, too long. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to um, get my boots on, all that fun stuff, and get ready to uh, hike up in here and catch this fish. And hopefully the water doesn't get too muddy from this rain because, yeah, it's getting pretty, it's getting pretty real out here. So, let's get it. All right guys, so what I did, I saw the Elk Hair Caddis on. It's like a size 14 or 16, but I put on a little nymph. Nymph's probably size also 14 or 16. Um, basically my thought process is with extra rain and extra water going through the riffles, hopefully any of the nymph or whatever the heck's in this creek. I tried flipping over a few rocks or some teeny tiny things. I don't have nymphs that small with me because I'm native fishing and it shouldn't matter. But I did put on a little dropper just because yesterday the only thing I saw it actually move at and try to eat was a nymph. I'm gonna sneak up here and stay really low and hopefully if I'm not stuck on everything, hopefully catch this fish. I don't see it in the same spot he was yesterday, which makes me assume that he's up further. Who the hell knows? I 
That was not him. Absolutely not him. Fish was small as heck. It wasn't him either. The heck? I've never even seen a different native in this hole. I got a bunch of dink nations up in here. It's weird. Ooh, is that him? Even though that fish was hooked. That's not him, is it? I don't think this is him. Come here, buddy. I mean, it's a big freaking native, but I don't think it's him. I'm so confused now because I've never seen so many fish in this hole. How big are you, son? I mean, I ain't gonna comply. I mean, complain. That's a freaking mega native. I mean, oh my gosh. It's a big boy. He's probably, I'll measure him here in a second. I'm guessing he's probably around 11. Big male brookie. Didn't get too much better than that. I measured the fish at 10 and a half inches, which for a male brook trout, like a native, that's a really nice fish. Like I'm definitely not complaining. But that fish I saw in there yesterday that I got some video of was 1000% over 10 inches. I mean, I could be over exaggerating, it's probably not like, you know, 14, but it was definitely like a 12-ish inch fish, and that fish was just not 12 inches. Like I saw it in the water when it swam off and stuff, it was not the same fish. Which then begs the question, why is it that I've come into this hole for a week straight and I've seen nothing but Goliath in here, not once seen another fish, and now I'm in here and I've casted and I have caught, or I've had like two other fish hit that were little natives, and then I just caught that one, which was about a 10-inch native, which is a nice native. So I don't know if these fish moved into the hole or if Goliath just ran the hole and now that the water's moving, all the fish are feeding and they're all out and running around or what it is. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting aspect that I wasn't really expecting to deal with. So I don't know, I'm thinking there's like one or two other holes in this creek that I haven't really caught much out of that I could probably go to and try to catch a few fish out of that are pretty close and give this hole like a rest for like 30 minutes to an hour and then come back to it later. This only is coming up on six o'clock so I still have couple hours of fishing although it's cloudy and it's in a hollow so it might be you know, maybe an hour of fishing but anyway that was cool beautiful beautiful 10 inch 10 and a half inch male brookie so yeah I'm gonna go see if I can't catch some other fish somewhere else and then come back here in about an hour and hopefully catch the actual Goliath got me a big one boys got me a big one I saw a little one in here so I didn't record and I hook a mega that's a big male brook trout, guys. Sheesh, it's a big boy. Came out from underneath that log. It's crazy. We got the big camera for this one because this is probably bigger than the one that I caught in the Goliath hole. It's a big old boy right there, guys. It's a nice one for sure. It's probably 10 or 11. I'll get a measurement on them though before I let them go. All right, guys, so that was another, that was a nice brook trout. That one came in at right at 11, just under 11. Um, another male, it wasn't quite as like thick as that one I cut up, caught up in the Goliath hole, but it was um, pretty long. It's been eh, 35, 40 minutes, so I've caught a couple more fish. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to Goliath and hopefully, fingers crossed, catch that stinking fish so I can be done with this and I don't have to come back to this creek. Not that I, I love this creek, it's unbelievable, but so that I don't have to like I guess keep bothering the fish. It's weird to describe, but it's like, to me, part of the fun of brook trout fishing is um, the exploration and seeing the new places. So it'd be nice if I could, you know, get ready to go fishing and not have to come back to this creek just so I can see new places. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna keep heading up and hopefully catch Goliath. So I went up to Goliath's hole, didn't see Goliath, and left. After a few days, I went back to the creek 
hiked up to the Goliath hole once again, did not see Goliath, and I left. And I repeated this process two more times. I never saw Goliath again. So I've been sitting on this footage for a month now. And at first I considered this an utter failure. Not only because I didn't catch the fish I was after, but also because it was my fault that I didn't catch the fish. And I was about to go through and click delete all on the SD card. I started thinking about this entire little saga and realized how much I learned from the experience. I got to spend around 10 days fishing for this native brook trout of a lifetime. There are a lot of people that go out and fish and never even get an opportunity to see a fish of that caliber. So to even be in the presence of a brook trout like that is incredible. Not only that, but I got to catch a lot of big native brook trout that are rarities in the Appalachian Mountains. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I realized after sitting back and looking at this for a month or so and sitting on the footage that not every fishing trip, not every time that you go after some big fish does it have to be successful. And I think I fall into that trap a lot because I have deleted numerous, I mean hours and hours and hours of video about fish that I didn't catch or I failed at or this, that or the other thing. And then when I inevitably am successful and catch a big fish, um, I end up posting that footage. And I realized later on that the only reason I was ever able to catch the big fish to begin with is because I had all the failures along the way. So. I decided to post this, if you haven't go check out Goliath part 1 and see me losing the fish and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, because of how long, how much time I spent on the water after this fish and watching this fish and seeing its mannerisms and how it acted to what I did, I went out and actually caught a giant native brook trout, it's my second biggest brook trout ever second biggest native brook trout ever and that is going to be in the next video so it was a whole backcountry trip and everything else really cool video i've already started editing it but just know that when you're watching that video i caught those fish because of what i did when i was chasing goliath so just something to think about hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment subscribe share the videos around and i'll catch you on the next episode of hardman fishing adventures when i'm catching a nearly 13 inch native brook trout.